Hello Pottery Plus and welcome back to the Pottery Plus studios. It's been a while since we've seen each other because we've been uh, dealing with some illness around here. I've had the flu and COVID and so the month of December I uh, just couldn't really do much. So I'm really thrilled to be healthy and back with you in this new year and ready to get some more content out to you that you can use on your pottery journey. So I wanted to uh, start off this year with kind of a continuation of something that we started a while back, which was lidded forms. So uh, several months ago, I did, a, I think it was a two part video about what I consider to be the simplest version of a lidded form. It looks like this. It's just one flat piece. You make it on the wheel, you throw it all in one piece, and then you just let it dry. Sometimes they need a little trimming, but pretty low maintenance in general. And that's why I call it a pretty easy lid. Um, today we're gonna be moving on to kind of what I would consider a moderately challenging lid because instead of just throwing it all in one piece, it takes a few steps, but this is the kind of lid that you would make if you want a rounded lid. So a lid that has a more of a dome shape to it rather than just a flat top. So um, let me just give you like a general overview and then we'll go over to the wheel and I'll show you the first part of making this type of lid. So you can see on this piece, this is an example of the type of lid that I'm gonna show you, Start that we'll start working on together today. And what you do is if you can picture this, so you throw like a bowl on the wheel. So you throw it with what will eventually be like upside down when the piece is done. So you throw a little bowl, kind of looks like that, but it, of course we'll have the excess right here. Then you turn it over, you trim your dome into it, and then the last step is that you add a knob. Uh, this potter's work is kind of asymmetrical, so uh, you might be seeing that, but this is a very well-made version of this style of lid, okay? And you guys, I mean, it fits like a dream. I can't remember who this potter is, but uh, anyway, even though it looks a little asymmetrical, that's intentional, and this lid fits like a glove. So maybe we can make one that does too. Uh, let's go get on the wheel. I'm excited to get started and I'm going to show you the part today where you make the bowl and trim it and then we'll add the knob in the next part. Okay, let's let's head over. I'll see you over there. Okay, so I'm starting off here with about half of a pound of clay and essentially what makes this lid, I would say like a moderately difficult lid compared to like the first one that we, that we made, like the totally flat one is that you have to throw the lid upside down. So to make a dome shape, you have to throw a bowl. So we're gonna essentially be throwing a shallow bowl and then you flip it over and you trim the roundness into it that will eventually be the top of the lid. So kind of think of it like you're throwing this upside down um, for now and then when you trim it, you actually are gonna be trimming it with the piece right side up, whereas usually when we trim, we're trimming the bottom. So this one's just kind of reversed on that. And uh, yeah, that first lid that we talked about long, long time ago, the easy lid, um, you basically just throw a flat piece with a knob in the middle and then let it dry. So as long as your measurement is correct, uh, on the first go round, you're good. But with this one, it takes a little more few more steps. Okay. I'm going to press my clay down really well. And of course, I'm just going to start by centering. Again, this is about a half pound, but um, that's just uh, a nice, easy round amount to do a demonstration with. So there are little lid guides that you can find to help you know, like, what weight, like how much clay you should use for what size of pot. Um, you know, I've only seen one of those in like my college textbook or yeah, like for my like pottery classes that I had, but I'm sure you could find that somewhere online. Um, yeah, like what weight you're going to need to make what type of lid for what type and size of pot. Anyway, okay, I'm going to stop babbling. <laughs> I need to center this low and wide because I'm making a low and wide form. Remember, you always want to center in the direction that you're going to ask the clay to go. So I kind of want to center this like a hockey puck-ish type of a shape. And that's getting pretty close. I don't want to spread it out too thin because like I said, I'm going to need 
to trim like the roundness or the dome top part of the lid, I'm gonna need to trim that shape into it. So I need some clay left down here to be able to do that with and not like um, trim a hole in it basically. Okay, so I'm gonna open this um, with the inside of a bowl, you guys, just a quick reminder, we always wanna have a, the inside of it curved. You wanna try to avoid a flat bottom. If you get a flat bottom, it's not the end of the world. <laughs> Um, but it's just something to work towards to get your bowls to where they have a nice curve. So I'm going to have an angled opening here. So I'm going to kind of angle my hand like this and pull it back towards myself with a piece that's small. It'll really probably more just be like a couple fingers rather than like my whole hand. And I'm just sort of pulling it like back and at an angle until I get it opened where I want it. Pretty curved in there so I'm happy with that but I do need to pull this lip out just a little bit more and you guys I'm not doing any measurements on this um because I just wanted to show you guys like the process of making this but what you would be doing as you go is you would be measuring this with your calipers against the flange that this lid would be would be intended to sit into so you would kind of probably be checking your measurement against the lid as you're throwing to know if you need to pull it out further, maybe take it in a little bit more, that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, I'm not, you're not going to see me doing that here just cause I didn't want to add the extra time to the video for that part, but you will, you know, with this, with any type of lid, really, you need to be checking along the way that you are matching up with your measurement that you take with your calipers, or if you have another tool that you use. Okay. So I'm gonna do a really gentle little, little pull just to get some more um, out of this. You know, you don't want a lid to be bulky, but you also don't want it to be like paper thin because a lid gets, you know, it's, it's a moving part. So it gets lifted uh, in and out of your lidded form where it's intended to be. Well, sometimes, I don't know, sometimes lidded forms are sculpt sculptural, but I think the general idea of a lid is that it's gonna be a moving part. It's gonna be picked up and set back down. So you don't want it to be, you know, super, super thin and flimsy so that it's gonna break. Okay, so my shallow bowl's coming along pretty nice. I'm just gonna reinforce my curve a little bit. Um, oh, I thought I had a needle tool over here. Oh, I do, here it is. I'm going to use my needle tool to check that I have enough thickness down here because the, again, I'm gonna need to trim off underneath to make my curve for the top of my lid. But if I don't have enough material to do it, I can move some back into that center point. Cause you guys, that's usually where you'll get a thin spot if you're not careful. So I don't have much there, but I have a little bit, maybe a mm, quarter of an inch. I think that it's enough considering that that'll be the top point of the lid and I won't be trimming the most off of there. I will be trimming the most from down here. So just to finish this up, I'm gonna grab my metal rib and I'm just gonna do a little bit of um, compression here. Okay, that's pretty good. That extra water out of there. You guys, I feel like this is a good way to be able to see, like really see your curve is if you kind of clean it up in here, you can get a good look at it and make any adjustments that you need. And I'm pretty happy with that. And I'm gonna do a couple finishing things here. Um, just little finesse items, I'm gonna chamois the edge. And I'm gonna trim a tiny bit off of what is the bottom for right now. And actually, there's not even really anything down there to trim. I'm just gonna take this tool and I wanna make like a little, like, I wanna give it an opportunity right there to be able to separate easily from the bat. Okay, so that I wasn't really doing any trimming motion. I mean, it isn't <laughs> trimming motion, but my intention right there was not to trim anything away. It was just to give it a little like ledge of like release from the bat right there so that when it's ready, I won't have to pry it off the bat. Um, from here, I need to let this dry to about like leather hard. 
Um, and you guys, someone was asking me a question about like how long to let things dry. It really just depends on what you're doing. But for this, you need to let this dry to the point where you can handle it. And it's not taking fingerprints. It's not um, collapsing easily if you hold it by the rim. So that's going to be a pretty much leather hard state. Um, so yeah, this is uh, the throwing step. Let me grab my other example and I'll show you the trimming step. Okay, so here I've got my leather hard lid on a foam bat. I don't think, I don't know if I've uh, shown one of these on camera before you guys. This one is really old. <laughs> She's tired. But um, I like to use a foam bat to trim like really small pieces or really low profile pieces because if I put lugs around this, it kind of, it takes access away from me from like the majority of the walls because there are such little walls. So I'm going to use my foam bat for this. Um, the idea, if you've never seen or used a foam bat before, is that the piece will just settle down into the foam. And between that and a little pressure on the top, that's what's going to keep it in place. Um, these don't work well for like tall, narrow pieces. It's really mm, intended for plates, bowls, little items like this. Um, but yeah, I find that they work pretty well uh, in that context. So I'm just going to start by centering this up. There's lots of different techniques to center for trimming, uh, but I have found that it's easiest for me just to kind of grab the piece and push towards center. <laughs> I know that's such a hard thing to like put into words. You kind of have to feel it to understand it, but when it feels like it's as centered as it's going to get, then I just release. Um, you'll see people tapping and doing different things, so you, you just kind of have to find what works for you, but um, I feel like because I can keep my hands on it, like I can get a better sense of like when it's in the center. I don't know if that makes any sense, you guys, but when you just tap and you're just getting that moment of contact, it's like, I don't know, I just feel like that doesn't give me enough information for what's going on. Also, please remember, you guys, nothing's ever perfectly centered. I mean, I feel like when something is perfectly centered, it's like something to celebrate because there's always just in my opinion, you're, there's always going to be a little something that could be more centered. Uh, what I'm feeling with this piece is that I think there's a little air bubble somewhere because I feel like a little ba-bum, ba-bum, ba-bum when I'm putting my hands on it like this. So anyway, don't let it, don't let it discourage you. It's just a part of the process. Okay, I don't use any fancy trim tools. I do like this little small loop. But other than that, I'm just going to be using this and your standard uh, one that comes in majority of toolkits. I'm going to start by just removing some of this bulk. And I am pressing down pretty firm with my left hand to keep this in place. And when you are trimming, you should see ribbons just like that. If it's um, coming off in like shards or dust... You might need to pivot your plan and um, come up with a different plan for that piece other than trimming, doing a lot of trimming. So it's really not good for you to breathe that, you know, when it's like scraping and scratching. You guys have probably been in the studio and heard people doing that before, but uh, the material that's going to be coming off of a piece that's that dry is not good for you to breathe. And also, you're probably just not going to make very much progress, and if there's other people around you, you're going to be making a horrible racket. So... <laughs> Something to keep in mind. Um, but what I was saying about the trim tools, you guys, is I have tried a lot of fancy trim tools. And for me, the ones that are super, super sharp, uh, I always end up chattering, which is like where your, your tool starts to go and it makes a bunch of little, well, we call them chatter marks, but it's basically just a bunch of indentions in the clay. And uh, like, I can't control it. So... <laughs> I, I mean, I'm not using dull tools, but um, yeah, just the ones that are really sharp, I just, I don't know if it's me or my clay or, or what, but I just haven't um, ever been able to master that. So, okay. That's why I just use these, kind of these pretty standard tools. Nothing fancy, nothing fancy. So I'm just kind of working towards the center point, keeping in mind that I want to create a curve. I don't want any flat points anywhere. So I'm kind of I'm angling my tool as I'm going up to try to meet that point, but trying to keep this very center mark as the high point. So I don't want to um, 
trim that down or, or trim anything around it that's going to be the same height as that. And guys, you don't have to get it exactly to a point because you are going to need a connection point for a knob, which I'm going to show you on the next video. So like if you can see that disc that I'm leaving in the middle there or that that point, that can be the connection point for your knob. Oh, that's actually a little bit big though. Take that down a little bit. And then from there, you want to just focus on the curve, okay? And it can be scary because especially when you're you're trimming a piece like this where what you're actually trimming is the top and what people are going to see, you know, we get really um <laughs> anxious about making mistakes I find on pieces like this, but it's, it's okay. Just, uh, if you feel, and I think what people worry about, and this is fair is trimming through it. And so sometimes they don't trim enough cause they're concerned about that. But if you're not feeling, you know, if your tool starts to go like this, like you feel that, um, that wave, it probably means you've got a thin spot. You need to stop work with it as best you can, but just to, to just stop where you're at. If you've, get that feeling is probably the best you can do in that situation just to stop and I know it's hard because we just want to keep fiddling and fiddling when there's something wrong but I've found it, it it is a skill all in and of itself to just be able to have the restraint to just stop when you need to so this is getting pretty close don't forget always oh I might block camera for a second but always look from the side you want to look at the silhouette of your piece before you really decide if it's done or not. I'm not really able to fully lean as much as I like right now, you guys, because my light and my <laughs> tripod is in the way. But I like to really lean. I like to get all the way horizontal next to my pieces and check out um, check out the full silhouette, like what it would look like. Imagine trying to see what it would look like if it were sitting on a table with you at eye level. That's kind of what you want to see. It's the viewpoint you want. So I think this is about done. Again, I can't fully, fully get that side view, but from the top, it's looking, she's looking all right. Um, you guys, you might notice my nails are super long today. I've been wanting to grow my nails and I've been hand building a lot lately. So I, I feel like at least for now, I can kind of get away with it. So that's why those might be looking a little <laughs> longer than I would normally have. Okay. So I think that's going to be about good for trimming. Um, and I'm liking the, I'm liking the dome. I think it's, um, it's got enough volume to it, but it's not going to look like it's popping out. Like the curve is not so dramatic that it's going to look like it's busting out of the top of the <laughs> top of the lid. I've got my little connection point for my knob. And so all I need to do now is just clean it up a little bit. And this is totally optional, you guys. You don't have to do this. I just, I like to kind of do this on a step where the clay is a little bit drier like this because my, my um, metal rib will almost kind of like burnish it. And you can see my hand is off the top now. So I'm not going to push too hard with any sideways motion right now. I'm not holding it down from the top. I'm just letting the foam grab for me. So I'm, I'm not applying a lot of pressure or tension here. Okay. So that's the first step. I'm not going to show you the knob on this video or how to put the handle on on this video because I just, uh, if you're not needing to see that part, I wanted to keep that to a separate part, but we'll get to that next time. I hope this was helpful for you and I'm so happy to be back in the studio. I'm so happy that it's a new fresh year and that we're all going to um, go on our pottery journeys together this year. So have a great day, great week, and we'll see you in two weeks, maybe sooner. I don't know, you guys, I kind of have a goal to start posting more, but we'll see how it goes. So yeah, in the meantime, however long till I see you again, I hope that it's a wonderful time for you. And uh, let me know if you have any comments, questions, or any other feedback. All right, bye-bye Pottery Plus. Bye, see you next time.